and welcome to the Keith Barker channel. My name is, what is, it, what is it again? Keith Barker. It's great to have you here. Have you ever been locked out of your house or locked out of, a, out of some gear? I have. And my, the first time that was really critical for me was back in 2003. You know, I say, 2003, how do you remember that? I was doing my CCIE lab for security and I locked myself out of the system by implementing AAA commands. So I've been a AAA member the Automobile Association of America for like, says here, 20 years, which is a great service. I love their service. Um, but AAA in a Cisco environment refers to authentication, authorization, and accounting. What I'd like to do in this video is provide uh, some overview of those pieces and then focus on authentication as part of AAA so you can better understand it and also hopefully not lock yourself out of gear. Or if you're pursuing certification and they ask you to look at a config and say, uh, what's going to happen? based on this configuration. If somebody tries to log in, I'd like to be able to go ahead and say, oh, based on this, here's what's gonna happen. So that's what I'm gonna share with you in this uh, video. So we're gonna do three basic things. Number one, an overview of AAA. Number two, the methods for choosing how to authenticate. And then third, probably the most important thing you can do to really master AAA. So stick around for the end. This is gonna be a fairly short video and I'll share that with you as well. All right, let's take a look at this topology to start with. <laughs> and uh, one of the questions I get all the time is, hey, Keith, what is that pen you use to uh, draw on top of all your screens? And it is Epic Pen. There it is right there. And uh, as many times as I do this, I always fail. I, I have a checklist. I should add that to my checklist. All right. So here's a, a packet tracer lab. And the objective in this lab is for Bob. So we'll put Bob up here. Bob, and Bob in this case is going to be an administrator, yay! And Bob is logging in through his mobile device, his wireless device, and the goal is for Bob to be able to manage this, this switch. It's a multi-layer switch, MLS1 using SSH. That's the whole objective of this lab. And in doing so, I, can, I would like to share with you some of the options and how AAA works, and then I'm gonna turn you loose on the lab. So we want Bob to be able to go ahead and SSH into this device. Sounds pretty simple. And and if you're up for it, bonus points, I'd also love you to go ahead and troubleshoot why this multi-layer switch uh, is not synchronizing with the NTP server. So the server's right here. It's acting as DNS, web, uh, what else? Um, AAA, NTP. It's just doing a host of things and <laughs> a, server thing of, a server thing of things. And our goal is to get uh, NTP working as well there if you can. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. Whatever you're using for your major course of study, the information on all those techniques, NTP and also setting up SSH and getting access via SSH, that's going to be in your major course of study. So whatever that course of study is, re uh, refer to that, research on that, and then go ahead and you can apply the skills here in the lab. Okay, let me share with you uh, some options for AAA. So let's start off with some of the basics. AAA, let me, fact, let me bring up... Um, in fact, let's bring up a device. Let's go to a console on this multi-layer switch. <laughs> oh, this is a lab that I've provided that you can play with. And the first challenge is how do you log on to this? And uh, I realized when I set this up, my intention was not my intention was not to have login requirements at the console, but I did a couple things that forced it. So I'm going to share with you right now what that password is. Uh, you can log in as admin. So if you have this lab or you've shared this with a friend, um, tell them that you can log in as admin and the password for everything, it says that here too. The, ad, the password is capital C-I-S-C-O, exclamation mark, two, three. Don't use that in production, too easy to crack, but uh, for the lab, that's what the password is. Okay, so for AAA, AAA stands for doing um, three basic logical things. And they are, and you already know this, if you've been around Cisco for a little bit or you're studying, it stands for authentication, And authentication is, who are you? Who are you? That's not bad. That's not good. Who, 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 who? My wife's a professional singer. <laughs> She's going to say, Keith, we should, we should work on that. Okay. So uh, I'll pass on the singing, but I will focus on my enunciation. She'll love that. So she can hear every word I say, and so can you. So the authentication is proving who you are. So part of the authentication would be for Bob at this device, as he's connecting via SSH, to require a login that Bob can say, my name is Bob, and then be subsequently asked for a password. Now, for I have some notes here to keep me on track. So for the authentication, there are several ways we could do it. One, we could use a local user. 
What do you mean? Like somebody who's here in Las Vegas? That's where I am. Is that a local user? No, a local user is a user account that's on this local device we're connecting to. So if it's a multi-layer switch, if we have a username called Bob and a password or a secret set for Bob and his privilege level, that would be using the local user database or the local database for authentication. That's certainly one option. We could also use a server. That's another option for authentication. S-E-R-V-E. R, nailed it, nailed it. So we could log in or we could authenticate against the server. So what that means, if we're using a server, a AAA server, when Bob connects to log in, this multi-layer switch is gonna talk over to the AAA server and say, I got somebody trying to log in, thumbs up or thumbs down. And so the language of love between a device like this switch and a AAA server could be Radius or it could be Cisco's TACX, T-A-C-A-C-S. And it's officially TACX Plus, but we just call it TACX. And so Radius or TACX could be used. Traditionally, if we have administrators who are logging in, like Bob, if he's an administrator, we're, church, we're probably going to be using TACX to authenticate administrators. And for users like a guest device or some other device that's just going, or another user going through the network, it's very likely we'll use Radius. But in either case, if we want to train this device, the multi-layer switch, to use TACX or Radius, we have to do two things. We have to tell the multi-layer switch, hey, use a TACX server or use a Radius server based on the protocol we're using. And we also have to tell the server, hey, please expect this client, multi-layer switch one, to come in. And if it's Radius, what port is he coming in on? And if it's TACX, that he's a TACX, TACX client, and we provide a secret so that they can, secure, they can talk to each other. So uh, that's the other option here. So a local user here, on the actual switch itself, the multi-layer switch, or use a AAA server. And let me check my notes to make sure I'm getting everything else. Yeah. Uh, another option for authenticating a user when they connect is we could just say, we want to use the enable secret. And the keyword for that is enable. So we'd say, hey, when somebody connects, uh, make sure, prompt them for a password. And the password we're looking for is the enable secret. And then once they get logged in, they would also have to type in enable and the enable secret again to get into privilege mode, assuming you're using the defaults. So we could have the uh, local user, we could have a AAA server defined user where Bob's account is kept over here on the AAA server, or we could use the enable secret, or one of my other favorites is none, as in no login required. <laughs> and by the way, if you go to a VTY line and say no login, that's what that means. It means no login, no, no login is required. So these are options for authenticating a person, an administrator in our case, Bob, who's trying to connect to this device to go ahead and log in. So that's the, one of the three things I wanted to chat with you about is the overview of the A piece, the authentication piece, and some of our options for authenticating users. Now the, the second A is for authorization, what they can do, and the last A is accounting, what they did do. So we're focusing just on the authentication piece right here as far as identifying who the user is who's trying to connect. All right, so the second thing I wanted to share with you is how can we train uh, a device like the switch on what should it use? Should it use a AAA server? Should it use the local database? Should it use no password at all? Should it use the enable secret? And the answer to that is we are going to enable AAA new model. And also we are going to go ahead and specify methods. Think of a method like a, in fact, let me show you and then let's talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and clear off my markings here. I'm gonna log in as admin and the password is capital C-I-S-C-O. I, I hope it is, capital C-I-S-C-O. Oh my gosh, capital C-I-S-C-O, exclamation mark two, three. Oh, thank goodness, all right. Show users, all right. So what this indicates is that I'm logged in as admin and I'm connected on the console through the magic of Packet Tracer. Okay, that's a, a huge stepping stone in the right direction. So let's do a show run, short for running config. And I'm just going to uh, scroll back up to the part I want to share with you here. So the question is, how do we control how a user is going to go ahead and authenticate? And what we can do is we can issue the command AAA new dash model that says we want to play by the new rules of using specific authentication, authorization, and accounting pieces. And what we would do is create some lists. And let me bring up a pen. So what this is right here, uh, let's, pick, um, let's pick this one as an example. Boom, right there. So AAA, this says AAA authentication login. Now in English, what that means is, okay, regarding logins to this device, here's the playbook. Here's, here's what I want to do. It's like the, the quarterback saying, okay, 
we're going to run this method called method two, and the whole team knows exactly what's going on. So this method called method two says, I want to check the local database first. So if Bob tries, if this is in force, this one right here, I'll just go ahead and we'll focus on this line right here. If Bob tries to connect via SSH on the VTY lines and method two is in force, it's first of all going to look at the local database, the switches, and say, do I have any users here? Do I have a user called Bob? Now, if we don't have any user accounts in the local database, it's not going to be used. And then it goes to the next option, which is option two in this line here, which is group TACAX plus. What does that mean? Group means we could have two or three or four different TACAX plus servers. And all this is saying is go ahead and use one in that group for authenticating Bob. And so what'll happen is Bob connects, he gets a prompt, tries to authenticate, and this server would be using TACAX if this was being used, group TACAX, and it would go to the, the TACAX server and say, hey, Bob's trying to log in, here's his information. And then the TACAX server would respond saying, thumbs up, let him in, or nope, I don't know who that user is. Now, what happens if we can't reach the TACAX server? So if we can reach the TACAX server and the TACAX server says no, that's it, Bob's done. It's over, Bob's not logging in uh, because of this line. But if the TACAX server cannot be reached, there's a short time, I say short timeout. There's a timeout that happens. And after that timeout, and it gives up on a TACAC server, it then goes to the next method in this method list, which in this example is none. And so what would happen is the switch after Bob's connecting and it like takes a long time and finally it prompts him for his user and password information. And he, he oh, actually, I yeah, take it back. If there was no local users and it couldn't reach a TACAC server after an extended period of time of having it try and not being able to reach a TACAC server, none would just let him in. Like, okay, you're in. Now, all of that, now this is a method list. Now look, check this out. This is really important. We have, how many method lists do we have here? Let's count together. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different method lists. And regarding the VTY lines, VTY zero space four, which is our four, which is our five VTY lines by default on a router. A switch will have like 15, zero, 16, zero through 15. Um, depending on what we have applied here, it depends how we're gonna authenticate Bob. So I, I love this. I just wanna give you a quick heads up on the logic of how this works. So there's two options for applying a method list to a VTY line. We could go into VTY line configuration mode for zero through four and say login authentication, and then we could specify a method list. That works like a champ. It's great. And that would that would be used on that VTY line or all those VTY lines. Or or we could specify uh we really like um you know this method, method two. We could go ahead and do a triple authentication login default and specify method two. And then if the VTY lines didn't have a more specific method assigned to them, they would just use that default method. So it's important to look at the VTY lines and see if they have a method list associated with them and then follow those rules. Or if there's no specific list and AAA new model is enabled, we then go ahead and take a look at the default and realize that those apply. So, all right, covering our objectives. Number one, I wanted to share with you an overview of our options for authenticating a user with AAA new model. And we talked about the local database, the enable secret, no password, or AAA server using Radius or TACX. I then wanted to share with you the details on how a method list is used inside of a Cisco router. And by the way, if you're saying, well, Keith, does this apply to CCNA? Yes, it does. So 5.3 in the blueprint says, configure device access control using local passwords. So could we have a method list that's specifying the enable secret, which is a local password? Yes. Could we specify a method list called local that is specifying a user account with a local password? The answer is yes. All this is totally fair game, you've been warned. And then uh, the other option, 5.8 in the CC, uh, Cisco blueprint for Cisco CCNA 20301 is differentiate AAA, the authentication, authorization, and accounting. All we're focusing on here, and it's enough for this video, is the authentication piece. And we're focusing on login authentication specifically for users trying to get in. So. Uh, that was the second objective I had. And the third objective that I've got for you is to, what is the best way, what is the best way to really master this content? It's going to involve studying a little bit, right? Studying or reviewing the concepts of AAA, focusing on uh, login authentication here, 
And then probably the best way of nailing it is hands-on practice. Hands-on practice, that's what we need to do. And good news, this lab I have built just for you. So this lab that I'm looking at right here is ready to go. Let me show you where to get it. And then I encourage you to take the action of downloading it, launching it in Packet Tracer, and then troubleshooting it because I don't know, it's not working. <laughs> so, we, so we should probably verify that as well. And I'd love for you, if you would, to go ahead and uh, comment if you've done this lab, go ahead in the comments below for the actual uh, video, which is gonna remain on YouTube. Go ahead and comment saying, did it, did the homework, did this lab, solved it. Now, and you might wanna avoid saying what the specific issues or challenges were, but just let me know that you did it because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing that you and I can do is hands-on practice. We can watch these things all day and all night, but when you start labbing it up and think, why didn't this work and why didn't that work? That starts our brains going. That starts us looking at documentation. That starts us chatting with other people in Discord, subscribing to this channel so we can get more details and having a good time and mastering it. Then once you master it, you're good to go. Okay, so uh, let's go to, ah, I was gonna say, let's go to the employee device up here, but he, <laughs> he's not even connected to the Wi-Fi network. All right, so the goal is, uh, going back here, Bob, the employee device on this employee device wireless can't access MLS1 via SSH and login. Can you help? <laughs> and the answer is you might have to troubleshoot basic connectivity first. This is very real world. Before you add on some new feature or function, make sure the infrastructure is working. And this will reinforce many of the concepts in CCNA as well. Let's go to PC1 just for uh, a moment. And I just want to verify whether or not I'm going to do a couple of basic things. This is what, I, if I was doing this lab for the first time, I'd want to verify some base. I'd get the wireless working, which is important. We also have a couple of videos on the wireless LAN controller and wireless LAN troubleshooting. That's all good stuff. And if we go to a command prompt and we go to um, IP config, the multi-layer switch is our default gateway. I just want to verify I can ping it 10.10.0.1. All right, good. All right, so I can ping it from the PC that's wired in. And let's also do an SSH. So this is, here's the syntax for SSH. It's SSH space dash L, which represents login. And then we'll put in Bob. And then we'll go ahead and put in the target of 10 dot, that one we just pinged, 10.0.1. Yeah. Didn't get too far. <laughs> but that's what we'd want to do on the employee devices. SSH dash L, username Bob to any IP address on the multi-layer switch. And you can look at the config and it's got at least three interfaces that you could connect to layer three switch virtual interfaces. And that's it. So uh, have some fun. And then for bonus points, and this is where I really know that you're just like taking it to the next level. For bonus points, I would love you to solve the NTP problem. I, I don't know what it is. NTP is not working. The, the, uh, NT, the multi-layer switch is not successfully able to synchronize its time with the NTP server. I want it to, I really want it to, but it's not happening. And I know it was working earlier before I broke the lab. So <laughs> what I'd love to do is have you troubleshoot that as well. And that, that'll get you bonus points. Okay, that's it. All our objectives here are covered. My call to action is go ahead and download the lab. Oh, let me share with you where to get that real quick. It's my bad. And here's where you can get it, thekeithbarker.com. Just go to that. It's also, I'll put that in the notes as well. Go to thekeithbarker.com, scroll down a little bit, and down here in the download section, tons of Packet Tracer labs, including this bad boy right here. Cisco PT for Packet Tracer, AAA, SSH, and NTP T-Shoot 2020-0516. And again, I'll have the uh, link for that in the description of this video. So that's your call to action. Go ahead, if you haven't already, click on subscribe, click on the alert bell, get all the updates. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., we have a quiz that's gonna combine the concepts of OSPF. <laughs> that was last week's. The concepts of CCNA, whether it's OSPF or subnetting or NTP or AAA or whatever it is, and gamification. And we use Kahoot, we can support up to 2,000 people. So um, mark your calendars, 11 a.m. Pacific time on Sundays, join us in the game. It's a safe space for you to practice and get insights on the concepts of CCNA. So until our next live event, thank you for joining me here on the Keith Barker channel to help get you the best tools and tips today, helping you get your CCNA. I'm, gl I'm glad you're here and I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody.
what you're putting in. 